In this land, an invisible world runs deeper and larger than what is visible. The Judean desert may look vast and empty, but it contains a peacefulness of the wilderness. It has a singular natural environment and the faith of those who gave up their lives. I'm leaving the Judean desert where I discovered the strong faith, roots, and indomitable will that has upheld Israel thus far. I'm off to Jerusalem, museum of religion and a historical time capsule. Jerusalem is an ancient city with a 3,000 year history where religion and ethnicities coexist. What does it look like today? The Gateway to Israel a long, narrow land in a key location connecting Asia and Africa is Tel Aviv. I'm traveling an hour from the economic capital, Tel Aviv, to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a 3,000-year-old ancient city in a mountainous area at an elevation 800 meters above sea level. Most of the citizens live in the contemporary new city built in the 20th century but there is a city within the city that Jerusalem is famous for. The old city, like an island inside Jerusalem, preserves its old appearance and represents Jerusalem. It is also referred to as a museum of religion for housing the primary sacred places of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, religions worshiped around the world. On top of that, it is also a time capsule, where remnants of a 3,000-year history have been accumulated layer by layer in the four-kilometer circumference of Jerusalem's city walls. Because sacred places of various religions are gathered here, the city has been destroyed dozens of times and has endured many different ownerships of the city. Each time the ownership changed hands, the castle walls were demolished or added to. The current walls were erected in the 1500s during the Ottoman Turk reign. 3000년의 고도 예루살렘은 이렇게 두터운 성으로 완벽하게 둘러싸여 있어요. However, even with such perfect defense, Jerusalem was conquered dozens of times. Despite this, not once did the city fall due to lack of water, even though water is scarce in this country. The secret is hidden in the city's underground. This is is even if the castle got sealed off, they dug a waterway to be able to continue using water drawn from Gihon Spring. Is water actually flowing there? It's truly amazing. The mere sound of the gushing water is refreshing. As if gushing forth from thousands of years ago, Gihon spring water flows through the waterways. The tunnel grows taller and shorter by two to three meters and barely offers room enough for me to pass. How much farther do I have to go? They contain traces of hammering from 3,000 years ago, as if the water tunnels were created yesterday. What is amazing is that these walls are not soft soil, they are very firm bedrock. They dug tunnels vertically through bedrock that lay sideways. 
Oh, how laborious it must have been. But then I spot something from within the cracks. At a closer look, I see it's a tree root. How it must have craved water. Some people approach through the dark tunnel. I was freezing. Yes, it was really cold and it was really dark. And at some points, the water got all the way up to well, above your knees, about halfway yes. up your thigh. For the Masons who fought against cold in the dark, dreary tunnel, they would have forgotten about their suffering at this moment. I can feel the Mason's excitement. Why did they make the tunnel S-shaped? For us, it's simply a short waterway. But to the Masons who made it, it must have seemed endless. The water, which started out at Gihon Spring, accurately reaches Shiloh. With this, the people in the castle were able to survive without fretting over water, even if they were besieged. The old city is a small area that is merely one square kilometer in size. But within the walls, it is divided into four quarters. The Jewish quarter, Armenian quarter, Christian quarter, and the Muslim quarter. They coexist, each with a completely different atmosphere. Therefore, based on which alley you take, you can either see women in hijabs or you can see Armenian monks. You can also encounter crowds of pilgrims retracing Jesus' footsteps. You can also find Jewish people in traditional clothing. There is no border, but people live in communities with the same religion and culture. What could it be? Armed soldiers and police are inspecting people in the street. The air is tense. However, this is an ordinary scene found anywhere in Israel. Tourists can pass freely without being inspected. There are eight gates at Jerusalem's city walls. You will encounter different scenery, culture and people based on which gate you take. The Muslim quarter is the most complex and vibrant area within the old city. Inside the gate is a traditional market. Because this area hasn't been developed, narrow alleys that are hundreds of years old continue in a maze-like pattern along the marketplace. I bought some dried figs as a snack. The ones sold by the women vendors are dried themselves to eat at home, so their quality is ensured. What is this? It's a necklace scale. Here they determine prices according to weight. I ask her to throw in a bit more, and acting reluctant, she gives it to me. 
ما Generosity and fun seem to be common elements in any traditional market. Like the layers of time accumulated within these alleys, you can frequently find merchants who carry on the family trade. This man is said to be the Renaissance man of the market. Everything you prepare. Everything. Best one, yeah, best yeah. one, number one. Since 20 years I know him. Ah, you know 20 years? 20 years. Me, in 67, about 40, 45 me. Wow. My father and grandfather in this shop. Father and grandfather. See this? Yes. For 65 years, my grandfather <laughs> worked with this. This is 65 years. This is 65 Historic relics aren't restricted to fancy things. Even simple things, if instilled with a person's life, can be an artifact or history of the times. But what items do merchants sell to tourists? There are many souvenir shops as this is a tourist attraction. But what captures my eyes the most are crucifixes in various shapes. Why is it that Muslims are selling souvenirs of other religions? The answer could be found immediately on this street. Every Friday, the Muslim quarter streets are filled with Christian priests and believers on pilgrimages. This street is Via Dolorosa, or the Way of Suffering. It is a pilgrimage path in which worshippers visit 14 significant stations from the time Jesus was sentenced at Pontius Pilate's court to his burial. Along the way, they pray and meditate. Which station is this? This is where Jesus first fell, carrying his cross up Golgotha Hill. The cross is said to have weighed 70 kilograms. This is a small chapel that belongs to the Armenian Apostolic Church. From the early church, devotees who came to Jerusalem have made pilgrimages to this street. Despite being from different countries, languages and cultures, each year hundreds of thousands of Christian pilgrims, Catholic, Protestant and Greek Orthodox, come here from all over the world. The pilgrimage processions continue now as they have since 2,000 years ago. Which station is this? This <laughs> The pilgrims stand in line to touch the handprint. The distance from Station 1, where Jesus is sentenced to death, to Station 14 is about 400 meters. The uphill climb begins in earnest at Station 5. At the scene of Jesus' final moments stands the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which was built as a commemorative church when Helena, mother of Roman Emperor Constantine, came and acknowledged it as a sacred place. This is where they lay Jesus after his death, cleaned him, and wrapped him in linen. Pilgrims from around the world come and place their foreheads and pray. The stairs have been worn thin from the numerous people who have stepped on them. The slope is quite steep. These are the final steps leading up to Golgotha Hill.
Nailed to the cross, Jesus' cross was raised on this spot. He died on that cross. Ownership of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is divided among six Christian churches, from the Roman Catholic Church to Greek Orthodox. This belongs to the Greek Orthodox Church. In the middle of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is a small Greek Orthodox chapel. This is the tomb in which Jesus was buried. The tomb surrounding has been shaved off and a building has been erected to what it looks like today. It has become a sacred place where Christians from all over the world visit. Not far from the Stations of the Cross is a golden temple. The striking rock dome, also known as the Golden Temple, is noted as one of the top architectural structures in Jerusalem. It is a holy place for Muslims and a daily place of prayer, and people of other religions are prohibited from entering. However, it was not an Islamic holy place from the beginning. The Golden Dome, which is more beautiful in the sunlight, is actually covered in 500 kilograms of gold. The elderly man says he has been a photographer here for 15 years and his residence is near the Golden Mosque. Okay. He has great tips for taking photos. <laughs> Although first built by the Jewish King Solomon, it was destroyed by the Roman army and then became an Islamic sacred place. As it went through a change of hands, now Muslims pray inside the mosque and Jews pray at the old outer walls. It is a relic that remains after the Romans destroyed the temple 2,000 years ago when they conquered Jerusalem. Judeans, 최고의 성지 통곡의벽에 들어갈 때는 이렇게 키파를 쓰고 들어가야 됩니다. It's because you're not supposed to show your head to God, who looks down on you from above. What are their prayers? Just once a year, on the day the temple collapsed, Jewish people who lost their country and were scattered across the world were allowed to come in here and pray. Since then, it has been known as the Wailing Wall. Solomon's yet 성전은 없어지고 남은 것은 성전의 한 벽면 서쪽 벽만이 남아 있고 이곳에서 유대인들은 다시 옛 영화를 꿈꾸며 통곡하며 기도를 합니다. But what are the pieces of paper everyone is slipping into the cracks? Because people were able to pray here for only a day, they wanted to keep their prayers at the Wailing Wall. So they wrote down their prayers and inserted them in the wall. The tradition remains to this day, even though now they can come whenever they want. the prayers of those who stand here become intensified. You are afraid this? Uh, yeah, bring prayer from people give me prayer to pray. From the U.S. Ah. People give me prayer, they write a prayer down. A lot of people from my church all around. 
Numerous prayers are inserted into the wailing wall in a day. Fervent wishes amass. There are two entrances to the wailing wall. Due to the custom of men and women praying separately, where they enter and where they pray are all separated. The Wailing Wall is a painful historic site. But at the same time, it's also a living educational venue. Children learn and study about their ancestors' lives at the several thousand-year-old historical site. However, among them, I can easily spot Jewish people in interesting garments, religious people who adhere to Orthodox law, what are those things on their wrists and foreheads? These are tefillim, verses of the Torah that Orthodox Jews wear on their foreheads and wrists, according to the Bible even today. What are the daily lives of Orthodox Jews like? I am visiting Mia Shirim, a town of Orthodox Jews who live in close adherence to Jewish law. Inside the town, only two colors of clothing can be seen, black and white. They wear these colors to maintain a reverential lifestyle. The reason the boys wear curls on the sides of their face is because it says in the Bible not to shave the beard on either side of the face. A cart-like motorbike makes its way dodging busily along the street. It looks like he's pasting flyers. But he doesn't seem to be posting just one type of them. It says, Night of Joy and Encouragement. This one says, Let's get together and save our souls. The onlookers look good and hard too. This one is a funeral notice. They must not be flyers after all. They don't read newspaper. So this is the only way for them to read about the news. No newspaper. No newspaper. So they put all the news over here. They put also the announcement for a funeral or a... everything that they wanted uh, to announce. The notices are the only media in this town. Not only that, in the 21st century, this town doesn't have internet or computers. This village is a religious island where people live intentionally with inconvenience and avoid secular things. Then what is it that these people like and are interested in? On the street, you can easily see portraits or paintings of old men. Who are they to be revered in such a way? The way we idolize famous celebrities and sports stars, Hasidic Jews idolize famous rabbis and hang up pictures of them. In order to become a rabbi or a teacher of wisdom and a spiritual guide, one must study a great amount. Yeshiva is a Jewish educational institution. The rabbi we saw in the picture is the principal of this school of 800 students. He is a well-known rabbi not only in Israel, but among Jews throughout the world. 
كان نهنين مع المرأة وأحر كاخ هم بعد سما مفخم ليوت هم لمدي مامورين زي ها بروفيسورين شل 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 عم إسرائيل بزرت. What do the students study at yeshiva school? The Jewish method of education is truly unique. It even amazes me, even though I teach students in Israel. In a large hall that resembles an assembly hall, students sit across from one another in pairs and engage in debate. It is far from studying quietly in a classroom or library. All Jewish people, until they reach adulthood, must study in religious schools of varying stages. Their main textbook is the Talmud which is vast in volume with over 12,000 pages across 20 books. Training to expand the range of thinking is the secret to making the Jewish people firm and strong. What is it that Jewish people consider to be the most important? You'll learn in a little bit. Crowds pour into the market on Friday afternoons. It's the busiest time. The customers are busy buying the last remaining articles and the merchants are busy tidying up. Why are they in such a hurry? This doesn't mean they're thrown out. Evidently, it is the Jewish custom that those who need them can take them for everyone to have a plentiful Sabbath. But who is this person carrying a horn and walking with measured steps. The merchants put away their merchandise and close their shops even though it should normally be a busy hour. However, some people are not happy to be rushed. A siren goes off, notifying the start of the Sabbath, which starts 10 minutes before sundown on Fridays. I don't close in the time because it's Shabbat. So please close, close. You make your press close. Make press. Let's do demonstration. Something like that. Something like that. At the end, the scattered men of religion start moving in groups. Police. 
The market was milling just an hour ago, but now it is empty as if a tide has swept everything out. The Sabbath has begun. The Jewish Sabbath is from Friday evening through Saturday. Because you cannot use machines on the Sabbath, you cannot ride in cars either. According to the Bible that says to grow and prosper, Orthodox Jews have as many as 10 children. How do they prepare for the Sabbath, which is considered the most significant to the Jewish people? I take a look inside a rabbi's house. The busiest people prior to the Sabbath are the mothers. She has to do the shopping and prepare the food that they'll eat during the Sabbath in advance. This is because they can't do any work on the Sabbath. This is challah, bread eaten during the Sabbath. They bake two for Friday and two for Saturday. What is it that they talk about during the Sabbath? Since thousands of years ago, the Jewish people have been preparing their Sabbath table each week. It's an automatic timer that is set in advance because they cannot do any sort of work during the Sabbath. They even set the timer for when the heater is turned on. Preparing for the Sabbath is truly particular and complicated. There are so many things that are prohibited. Wouldn't it be inconvenient and tiring? When preparations for the Sabbath are complete, the mother lights the candles. And now, the Sabbath begins with prayer. This is a land where different religions coexist like a mosaic, each with their own color. This is Jerusalem, the 3,000-year-old historical city.